What's going on beautiful people? Today we're setting up a 30 centimeter or one foot cube aquarium. Now this size is really good for many reasons. One, it fits in a space in any house or a flat. Two, it doesn't cost a lot to actually buy the tank itself. And three, anything you want to put in hardscape wise, again, small, num small size, small numbers as well. So it's cheaper. And this right here is the tank that we're going to be setting up. Now at first glance, it looks really, really good. So why change it? So I've had this tank running for quite a while now. And when I set it up, I didn't do it as well as the methods I've grown to learn. Grown to learn, is that the methods that I use now? Yeah, there was basically nowhere near enough nutrients in the substrate system. Now I could use root tabs to boost it up if I wanted to carry on, but I'm not like that. You know what I'm like, out it comes in with something new. <laughs> so yeah, everything has to come out of this. Any good plants I will save to reuse again, as I always do. And I'm also going to be upgrading the lighting. Now, the reason I'm showing you the tank now and the lighting now is because I'm trying to show you that you don't have to have really expensive lighting to make this work. After all, look, we're getting such good growth down here. And this is like one of the most budget lights that you can actually get. The only reason I'm upgrading is because I've got a twin star light, which is very similar to this one above although on a smaller scale. And I really, really love the coloring it gives the fish and the plants. The coloring from the cheaper light, which is just white LED, seems to be quite greeny, which is really nice, but uh, I've got a lot of green already. So bring on the unnecessary fish tank cleaning montage. So I was trying to be extra careful then when taking the water out, so I put a net over the end of the pipe. And this is because there are so many more shrimp in here than I had even thought were, were there. I thought there were a couple, but look, there's loads, which means they were all in previously with the better fish that are in here, and he was absolutely fine with them. So I'm gonna put them back into his tank so they can carry on cleaning in there and breeding as they have been. Quite a lot of dark ones. I think it's dark blue. Some are black, some are natural but there's quite a few there, isn't there? Awesome. And let's face it, who doesn't like a bunch of free shrimp? I don't care if they're the natural colored, purple, I don't, I don't know if you get purple neo -caridina. but anyway, it doesn't matter. Who doesn't like free shrimp? And whenever I find loads of baby shrimps like that, I'm thinking free shrimp, like it's so good. <laughs> So I've caught all of the adult shrimp as far as I can tell, and I'm gonna put those in with the better fish that are in before with them. So they were in with this better fish before, and I'm pretty sure the adults survived because they're big enough, but any shrimplets, if I put them in, he'll pick them off because there's not as many hiding spaces. There we go. Didn't even try and hunt them, brilliant. Although I think he now thinks that I just put a load of food in for him. Yeah, <laughs> that's not food. I'll give you some food in a minute. Great looking tank though, isn't it? It's been set up now for nearly a week and all of the plants look in the background and everywhere are growing in so well. No filter again in this one, just the, the same system as I'm using for this tank. So I've just spent way too long trying to catch each and every shrimplet. Some of them are teeny, teeny tiny, like I spent way too long, but what can you do? You can't just leave them, can you? Like I couldn't do that. So it's worth the time and the effort, but now we can carry on with the build, get this tank ready to go, get it cleaned up, put the new light on. So I've pulled the whole thing out. It's gonna be easier to work on and film as well. And now I'm gonna get that new light fitted. So this is the real budget one and it looks like that. And then that's the twin star one, which looks really plush, fits perfectly. Um, you can't really see a lot of difference yet, but it's the plants that really show it, to be honest. It's a, it's a lot neater for presentation as well. The other one's not bad, don't get me wrong, but you know, this is a lot more expensive, so you would expect that, wouldn't you? So we have our tank looking beautiful and ready to start. First thing we need to add in is a substrate system. The first thing that's going in is a big jug of topsoil. This is just normal topsoil you'd buy for your garden. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do one of those, and then on top of that, one scoop of aquatic pond soil. It looks kind of similar, but I'm gonna trust that it isn't. So I've got one and one there, ratio. And then we just wanna break up any clumps and mix the whole thing together. And then into this goes a mixture of like sand and gravel. And what this will do is it will just stop any of the soil just like compacting together and rotting out. 
It'll also enable water to sort of penetrate everything as well. In fact, it might be worth another jug in there of the gravel. Yeah, we'll do. Yeah, there we go. So we've got two parts soil to two parts gravel then. So 50-50 mix of uh, gravel to soil. And we then want to bank the whole thing so it's thicker at the back than the front. It just looks so much better from like a front view. When you do that, it gives way better depth to the aquarium. Right, sweet, next job, spray the whole thing down. Now I'm opting for a white sand, or just off-white sand, because I find that it looks the mutts nuts. <laughs> I don't know, I just find it's the most natural, and it can be mixed with anything else if you want as well. What we do need to make sure though, is that we've got at least an inch capping over that substrate system underneath, just keeping everything locked down. I always go a little bit less than an inch at the front, to be honest. I don't know why, it just looks a bit better. And don't forget to spray down the sand as well. Um, it's not essential, I guess, but I just find it, it's better to get everything sort of wet and down, locked down where it's gonna be right now. I've just realized that I've forgotten to put one thing in, root tabs. So I'm using the API root tabs. These are what I use for all of my tanks. Every single setup I use them in, I don't know how I forgot. Little tablets like that. I'm gonna break them up into four. One, two, three, four. It's really badly spaced, but never mind. And then dot that all the way across the sand. Usually I would have uh, crushed these up and sprinkled it all over the top of the substrate system but I forgot. But because we're spreading it so evenly, it'll work just as well. And now for the really creative bit, we can start working on some hardscape. So for this build, I'm gonna be using Sirius Stone. It's so readily available. Everyone can get it. It's probably one of the cheapest aquascaping rocks. Tons of detail in all the rocks and it's just it's quite easy to scape as well because there's so many different angles shapes and sizes they lock in it'll just look good in a pile to be honest so i want to go for a classic nature aquarium style um that's probably much too big maybe i don't know let me push it in okay okay that can work that could work so i'm just going to build like a little border or retaining wall and that will lock everything behind that we can plant into Oh yeah, that fits perfectly. Look at that. So we've got like a beach area, we'll have a plant area, we'll have rocks and stuff as well. I'm just gonna get these in a little bit. Then we just did a little one in this back corner. So currently this whole line of rocks is pretty straight, so we can add something like, just another piece like that coming forwards a little bit. Got some room to plant behind it then as well. That just breaks it up and just makes it a bit more interesting. There you go, see, so it looks a little bit less diagonally straight line and a bit more, di I, I don't know, it just, it looks like something. <laughs> and then on top of that, we can go to these really nice pieces of spindly wood. Not quite sure how I want it to sit. Lower, does that look good? I think that looks quite good. Yeah, I'm liking that. It's almost like a little edge of a wood or something like that. Kind of feel like we need something in this section though as well. Got this piece here. I don't know if it will work, but hopefully it will. Yeah, I think that's better. It's just adding even more into that section. So although that's looking fantastic, we now need to raise the back area a little bit so that our plants in the background are higher than the rocks. And to do that, I'm just gonna use some cheap pea gravel. and then just another little sprinkling sand over the top just to help the plants get locked in when we plant them. Now the gravel and sand should be enough to hold the wood down, but I'm just gonna put a little dab of glue in some of the areas where it's touching the rocks, just in case. If it floats up later on, it's just, oh, it's the worst thing and it's happened many times. So yes, yeah, glue it and lock it down. So yeah, just a little bit of super glue on some contact points. There's one for that piece. Make sure it's fully touching. Tiny little dab there. And then there's one right at the back here. And then I've got this like activator. 
which makes it all stick instantly. One squirt. And those sticks are now not going anywhere. Now we can get started on some details in the foreground. I'm gonna go for some Rio Shingu. It goes really, really well with Sirio Stone. Really don't need too much though, because there's not that much space to fill, is there? And I find the stones tend to look best when you push them flat so that they're laid down, because that's how they tend to be sat in a river, wouldn't they? Because they've got fast flowing water going all over the top of them. Not that we've got fast flowing water in this tank because there is no flowing water. And now that's looking great. We can put some plants into the foreground as well. And I've currently got some Monte Carlo from Tropica in my storage tank and some Liliopsis brasiliensis. So we'll use both of those. And we've still got a little bit of Crypt Albida left as well. So yeah, really good textures. I think they'll go nicely. Oh, and how could I forget all that Hydrocultural Japan all at the back there? Definitely some of that. Now, although this Monte Carlo looks quite big at the moment, it won't be once it's been underwater for a bit. For a bit. The, the leaves go really tight and compact together and stay low and carpet horizontally. It doesn't really grow vertically. If you put it on the edge of something, because you don't have to plant it, it will sort of drape over as well. Yeah, I'm really liking that. Monte Carlo is a great detail sort of plant and already that foreground looks like it's been there for quite a long time, but it'll only get better and better as well. So I've got some nice little pieces of Anubius I'm gonna put right at the bases of these rocks. I'm just pushing them into cracks and that'll just lock them in, hopefully anyway. <laughs> then this piece is actually glued to a rock, so I think that'll sit nicely over this area. Yeah, look at that. I've also got some really nice booses here that I've just glued to a rock, a tiny stone actually, and they can just sit then anywhere looking pretty. <laughs> On there, so that's Boost Katagang, and this is Boost uh, Wavy Green slash Red, one or the other. I feel like we need a little one in this gap as well, so I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue on there, and then you glue the rhizome or you stick the rhizome on the glue. A few seconds, done. Now it wouldn't be a nature aquarium without some java fern, would it? Just in the middle there, I'm gonna keep it low. I don't want it coming up too high because I want to see the stems behind it. And then a little bit of windelov on this side. So it's always at this point that I like to fill the tank up with water and then I can plant longer plants. Uh, you can see how they're sitting better. If I do it now, they're all gonna droop over. I wanna know if it looks good or not, will I? So I like to fill up. Plus it means that these aren't gonna dry out anymore and we can take our time with the next part. And if you're filling your tank with tap water like I am, be sure to dechlorinate it as you're filling it. That will mix it all around then and get everywhere in the tank. It is now the next day. The tank is looking so sweet, right? The colors really pop once the uh, once all the misting and the murkiness clears from the initial uh, fill up. But we are already okay to put in our fish. And what am I gonna put in? I haven't even spoke about that yet, have I? Now, many old school members of the channel will remember Hellboy, my better fish. He is down here in this planted tank, although he doesn't quite look the same as he did nearly two years ago. It was February I bought him, two years ago and he was the same size when I bought him, which means he's probably an adult when, when I actually got him. So he's probably about three years old now. It's the longest I've had a better for. He's done really well. And, it, and apparently these sort of short fin, fin placat ones 
are way less sort of overbred and you do get better lifespans. Oh, it looks good, look at that, very nice. Now he's called Hellboy because he used to have a full red face with black eyes, but uh, better fish, over time they changed colors and he lost that red and it turned sort of like a dark blue to black at the front and then uh, the cool blueness at the back. And then well, let's get him out of here and get him in his new tank because you see his colors way better in there. Okay, here we go, put him in. Now remember I heat the room and not each tank, so the temperature is matching and he's all good to go straight in. Look at that. So some initial shyness to better fish going into the new tanks is to be expected, but <laughs> I wasn't expecting him to disappear completely. But that's okay because it gives us the chance to add two things that the tank needs. And the first thing is gonna be beneficial bacteria. Now I use API Quick Start. They sponsor the channel, not, not a sponsored video or anything, but it's just what I always use, to great success. So I'm gonna use two capfuls of this. And as always, a little bit more <laughs> and I want to give that a little bit of a stir around because we don't have a filter in there remember so get that beneficial bacteria everywhere now all the plant well a lot of the plants especially stems are from other tanks which would also be coated in beneficial bacteria as well so that will just get everything going I will be doing water changes water testing every day to make sure we get no spikes in ammonia or in nitrite or anything any nasties so the first week I'll probably just do 50% water change it's easy and quick to do and it just negates any problems at all and the second thing we need floating plants so all of my no filter tanks have them up here for instance we've got some red root floaters there and some salvinia in the back there my shrimp tank here although it has a filter it's, it's barely even on anymore <laughs> well that has got duckweed in it and I don't mind duckweed in a shrimp tank but I don't want it anywhere else the original no filter tank has got again red root floaters and some salvinia both doing well axle rod aquarium salvinia the brand new red forest aquarium for my uh white better you can see here <laughs> who's just made a bubble nest look at this here obviously very comfortable i mean this is this is quite a new setup whenever you move better fish they tend to do a bubble nest straight away i don't know why so this setup is a week old now and yeah bubble nest but this one's just got red root floaters because obviously it carries on the theme that we wanted to go for like the red on the surface the red plants at the back as well that went bright <laughs> the neon tetra no filter tank as well this has got salvinia Again, I kept this one sort of a green look with one pop of red, really. And I think that works quite well. And then the Ruby Tetra setup as well. These guys aren't as shy as they used to be. Um, I'm saying that they are kind of darting in and out now. I just turned the light off so it wasn't reflecting on the tanks behind me. But yeah, they've got Salvinia as well. Really, really healthy looking Salvinia. The healthiest Salvinia out of all of them for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> there we go. That's better. Now we can see their sort of proper colors. Oh, I've just come back in. He's out. Yay, right, I'm gonna get you some floating plants. Not that he needs them because he can go in, it looks like he's taking up a lot of space, these plants, but he can go in this whole section. It's like a little labyrinth back there for him to be able to explore. So it's actually really cool. Okay, here you go, buddy. A few red root floaters, some salvinia. Again, all covered in beneficial bacteria as well. So they're gonna benefit the tank massively. Now I know some people don't like floating plants, but they're kind of really, really good in better tanks. They break up the water sort of surface and I found that they tend to cause less jumping. Now, fortunately, this better fish here, Hellboy, not a jumper at all, never jumped. Um, all of my better fish actually don't jump. That's not to say that yours won't. Whenever I put a better fish into a new setup, I tend to put the water level right down just to sort of observe and see, see what their character is like. But I know that this guy's all good. He's, he's not like that at all. He's a very, very good boy. <laughs> so there we have it then, another cool scape complete. This one's easy to maintain as well because those stems will all sort of grow together and we can just trim them off in a nice arc, nice and quick. You may notice that I didn't put any moss in this tank. That's because I'm just, I'm such a sucker for trimming it. I, I never do it, it just takes over the whole tank in no time. Whereas with all these plants, they grow quite quick but not like take over quick. So it's easily maintainable. And I am all about that easy maintenance lifestyle. If you haven't already, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe button, leave me a comment. It helps out with the algorithm and all that sort of thing. You guys know the drill now. And I'm really looking forward to seeing you guys on the next one. We've got some cool stuff planned. Been doing quite a lot of low tech stuff. At some point soon, I'm gonna be doing a massively high tech, high end one, just to see what it's like as a bit of an experiment. I mean, I know I'm not gonna like it as much as this low tech stuff though. I just find there's nothing better than setting something up and just leaving it to its own devices. And that's exactly what you can do with these kind of setups.